Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you all enjoy a cup of tea at least once every day. What makes a perfect cup of tea is a perfect tea blend. With that in mind, let's move on to my final year research presentation on the title Determination of the Combined Effect of Selected Parameters Affecting the Quality Retention of a Ceylon Black Tea Blend. I conducted my research at the Quality Assurance Department of Dilma Ceylon Tea Company PLC in Palia Goda. First of all, let me give a brief introduction on my research topic. Sri Lanka is the world's fourth largest producer of tea and contributes to 8% of the world tea production. Tea cultivation is one of the main sources of foreign exchange to the country and it contributes 1.2% to the GDP. Here, I would like to discuss the importance of my research. The researchers done in Sri Lanka on the quality retention of black tea blends have only targeted the effects of individual parameters. Thus, this approach has been proven unsuccessful leading to quality alterations. Developing a tea blend by considering the combined effect of these factors at the development stage itself is an emerging trend of the current global tea industry. Thus, this can be applied to retain the quality of Ceylon black tea blends to improve their value chains targeting the export tea trade. The overall objective of this study was to determine the combined effect of the blending formula, elevation and moisture content of incoming tea, and the storage condition of the end product on the quality retention of Ceylon black tea blends instead of studying their individual effects separately. The specific objectives were to determine the final values, differences, and patterns of variation in moisture contents and water activities of Ceylon black tea blend subjected to different treatment combinations. To determine the consumer preference for Ceylon black tea blends using organoleptic evaluation and to assess the total color of Ceylon black tea blends using UV visible spectrophotometry. The methodology of the study. Here I have included the individual parameters taken into consideration in this study. Two levels for each parameter were taken into consideration. T were collected from two elevation levels, thus low-grown T and high-grown T were used. Initial moisture content was considered relative to 7%. Two blending formulas were selected for the preparation of the tea blends by mixing different types of tea grades. Finally, the prepared blends were stored in two types of storage conditions, namely ambient conditions and air conditioned conditions. All these efforts finally resulted in 16 different treatment combinations. And I have given here the notations that I have used for them. The experimental protocol. First, I collected the required tea grades from the production lines. Then, I increased the moisture content of tea required to prepare the high moisture blends. Then, they were manually blended. The bark density, moisture content, and water activity were measured and noted down. Bagging and packaging the blends was done using the tea bagging machine. The tea envelopes were manually packed inside cardboard inner boxes and then in corrugated outer boxes. The boxes were then stored in two types of storage conditions, namely ambient and AC conditions. Sample collection for the continuous analysis of moisture content and water activity was carried out. Finally, a sensor evaluation and a total color analysis were conducted as well. The testing criteria. The moisture content was measured using the digital moisture analyzer. Water activity was measured using the water activity meter. And the sensory analysis were conducted using two consumer-oriented ranking tests and a consumer-oriented hedonic test. 
the total color of the infusions were measured as absorbance values at 450 nanometers by UV visible spectrophotometer. Finally, I brought all the treatment combinations for the observation of the surface color of the tea infusions. Statistical analysis. Total color analysis, final moisture contents and water activities, differences in moisture contents and water activities were analyzed using 4 by 2 factorial design. Trends in moisture contents and water activity were carried out using general linear model. The sensory analyses were conducted using non-parametric tests. All the statistical analyses were carried out using the SPSS-18 software package. Results and discussion. In the analysis of final moisture contents of the treatment combinations, as you can see, there are three treatment combinations which have their final moisture contents beyond the critical limit of 9%. The final moisture content of F4 treatment combination showed the lowest value. In all the factorial analysis conducted, there were significant differences at the four factor level itself, suggesting that there were only a few interaction effects that did not show any significant differences. They are represented by tables in the results and discussion section. In the analysis of final water activities of the treatment combinations, also the lowest value was given by the treatment combination F4. Here also I have given the interaction effects which did not show significant differences. Since the initial moisture contents of the 16 treatment combinations were different, I conducted an analysis of difference in moisture contents. As you can see, there are moisture absorptions and moisture desorptions in different treatment combinations. In the water activity difference analysis, as you can see, all the differences are positive in their values. Here, I have plotted the moisture variation of the treatment combinations, and here, I have plotted the water activity variation patterns of the treatment combinations. As you can see, all the 32 lines have their own unique pattern of variation. And there are both gradual rises and gradual falls in all the 32 lines. In the total color analysis, the absorbance values of the treatment combinations were analyzed. As you can see, the lowest value was given by the treatment combination F16, that is, the lightest infusion was given by that treatment combination, showing that lowest degradation of the flavins had been occurred in that particular treatment combination. Scientific background of the research findings. Air conditioned storage resulted in lower moisture contents and water activities. This can be attributed to cool and dry conditions, which is ideal for tea storage. Tea with high initial moisture contents in air conditioned storage exhibited moisture desorptions. This can be attributed to effects of moisture gradients on the static moisture levels. Higher proportions of BOPF resulted in lower moisture absorptions, owing to lower surface area of the particles. Higher proportions of dust one resulted in darker infusions, owing to the high surface area of the particles. The sensory analyzers. The first two sensory analyzers were conducted as consumer-oriented ranking tests. In the first sensory analysis, which was conducted using treatment combinations at ambient storage, the best treatment combination was the one that I have represented in blue color line. That is, high-grown, low-moisture formula 1 at ambient storage. In the second sensory analysis, which was conducted using the treatment combinations, at AC storage, the best treatment combination was the one which I have represented in the yellow color line that is low grown, low moisture formula one at AC storage. In the final sensory analysis, which is a consumer oriented hedonic test, the best treatment combination out of the 16 treatment combinations 
was the low growth, low moisture formula one at AC storage. The results can be influenced by the color component, where low grown teas and small particle sizes results in darker infusions. The conclusion of the study, tea being a hygroscopic food material, water activity and moisture content are the most important parameters to decide on its final quality. In the analysis of final moisture contents and water activities, high grown low moisture formula 2 stored in AC conditions gave the lowest value. In the analysis of difference in moisture contents, moisture desorptions and moisture absorptions in different treatment combinations were observed. In the analysis of difference in water activities, the treatment combinations having lower differences had higher final water activities. In the analysis of trends in variation of moisture content and water activity, both gradual rises and falls in the trend lines were present. In the sensory analysis, the best combination was low grown, low moisture formula 1 stored in AC conditions. In the total color analysis, the low grown, low moisture formula 2 in air conditioned storage gave the lightest infusion. The results of each analysis is unique and is attributed to the combined effect of all the four parameters selected. Most importantly, those combined effects cannot be evaluated by taking account of the cumulative effects of the single parameter variations separately. Recommendations To understand further variation in moisture contents and water activities, it is worth if these treatment combinations can be stored for a longer period and studied further. Here are the key references I use for the preparation of my thesis. And with that, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much.